Right, good evening, folks. Welcome to uh, the A Level History presentation. Thanks for taking the time to join me just to find out a bit more about what's going on with A Level History. Uh, what I plan to do in the next 15 minutes is just to run through uh, some of the reasons why you um, would be very well advised to choose A Level History and tell you a little bit more about the content of the course and how it's set up and to leave a little bit of time for us to or for me to answer some questions that you might have uh, using the chat function. Just to let you know, I am recording this presentation um, just so it can go on the school website. So I hope that's OK with everyone. If it isn't, um, just let me know. Right, let's get going. OK, um, so in terms of why you would choose to study history at A-level, um, I hope you know, first of all, to really make the point that this is a, an A-level that is a highly respected A-level, both by employers and by universities. It's uh, A-level that the Russell Group universities, which are sort of the group of the top, top 24 universities, um, talk about as a facilitating subject. And that's a subject that they see as a really, really good basis for studying at their universities, whether it's history or whether preparing students with the kind of key skills to go on um, and study different degrees. OK, so it's a highly rated academic subject uh, and it's also a subject that keeps lots of doors open for you in terms of career opportunities. So you're not going to be closing too many doors by studying A-level history. We'll talk a little bit more about professions and jobs that um, might come after an A-level history qualification later in this presentation. Um, I, I hope and I think it's really important that you would be studying A-level history because you're interested in it. You know, with A-level you're going to be spending more time on the, the subjects that you choose and being interested in those, having the motivation to take on that extra independent study, reading around the subject that you're going to be asked to do when you're studying A-levels. Um, it's really important that you've got some interest in, in the subject. So um, I would I would encourage you to pursue the subject if, if that's the case. And, you know, it's it's a subject and the topics that we do have real connections and relevance to the, the current day. So I've just put a few things up on the, the slide that, that you're looking at. Um, you know, I'm teaching my year 12s at the moment about the Korean War and, you know, the division in Korea um, is regularly making the news still. So there are plenty of connections there. Um, Vladimir Putin and Russian foreign policy, you know, been talk of a new Cold War. Well, that, you know, connects very well to what we're doing with A-level. And sorry to mention Brexit, but the, uh, you know, experiences that we're going through at the moment do have, you know, certain parallels with, um, Henry VIII, etc., as the the picture suggests, and uh, another topic that we'll talk about um, that we study is the history of civil rights in the USA, and of course the Black Lives Matter protests, uh, not just in the USA but across the globe, connect very strongly with that. So there's a real um, relevance um, to what we're doing, and it's going to help students understand the world that we live in today, as well as develop skills from the past. In terms of entrance requirements um, and the skills that you need. The entry requirements for the course are to get at least a five at GCSE history um, and to get at least a four in English. And you know that that's important because you know there's no denying it is a literacy based subject. You know there, there's um, reading and writing involved and the assessment um, will be extended um, answer questions. You know from my perspective that's actually kind of better and more straightforward than what uh, you're currently doing at GCSE because whilst the answers that you're going to be asked to write are, are longer you actually have to answer much less number of questions in the exam uh, and many less question styles so I think actually it's something that we can practice and develop but in terms of developing your understanding there's clearly going to be reading involved and the assessment is through kind of extended written answers so your literacy, literacy skills are going to be really important um, in succeeding the course um, and engaging with the subject. I mentioned it already in terms of that idea of being interested with it, but really, you know, to ask questions, to be motivated to go and find out a little bit more about things that we've we've covered or brought up in lessons, you know, is, is going to help you succeed. Um, so I think that's that's an important 
element um, of any A level, but especially history. Um, just to mention, you know, there is absolutely no kind of requirement or necessity that um, history and politics are done together, but they are two subjects that dovetail and go really well together. Um, I know because I teach both of them, um, but but especially the kind of engagement and interest in current affairs, you know, reflects really well on both of them and the sort of writing style and the requirements for the exam answers. They're not identical, but they're quite similar. So we've got a number of students at the moment that are studying both. Um, and like I say, it's nowhere near essential, but I think uh, often they're, they're two subjects that go really well together. Right. In terms of the actual course, um, just for info, we're, we're on the AQA board um, and there are two examined uh, elements on the course that you'll do. The first one uh, is on the Tudors and the second one is on the Cold War. And they're um, courses that you study in both year 12 and year 13, but you will have a significant break in between. So you'll study these courses with uh, Mr. Peel who is the teacher for the Tudors and myself is the teacher for the Cold War. And you'll study those um, from the start of year 12 through to kind of about April, April, May time. And then you'll pick them up again in October. So there'll be a, a quite an extended sort of break in the middle so you don't get too too much Tudor fatigue or Cold War fatigue. Um, what we look at with the Tudors uh, in year 12, you will study the reigns of Henry the Seventh and Henry the Eighth, focusing on their foreign policy and um, domestic policy, especially the Reformation and the impact that um, the break with Rome had on society and politics uh, in this country. And then in year 13 of the Tudors, you move on to look at how the, the changing monarchs in the mid-Tudor crises, again, impact on the people through the changing religion uh, before studying Queen Elizabeth and issues around the succession and foreign policy, uh, again, especially in terms of uh, relationship with Spain and Spanish Armada. And uh, with the Cold War, you know, we look at um, the state of the world after World War II and how um, the Grand Alliance of Soviet Union, America and uh, Britain broke up so quickly um, and the world entered a different phase where these two great superpowers were ideologically opposed to each other uh, that dominated um, global politics uh, and, and countries' foreign policies for this extended period of time. Uh, we look in year 12 at, at the origins of the Cold War, how how the Cold War developed between 1945 and 1949, uh, and then we kind of examine how it spread from being a predominantly European conflict through um, to being a global one, initially focusing on Asia, looking at the Korean War and the kind of origins and the background to conflict in Vietnam and look at China uh, becoming communist. Uh, and we look at the role that nuclear weapons and the arms, nuclear arms race played um, in politics, you know, examining questions like, does it actually make the world a safer place? Um, and the impact they had on relations between countries, um, looking at the space race and culminating with the Cuban Missile Crisis in year 12. And then again, we pick up in year 13 and we actually look at the Vietnam War and in more detail. Um, we look at kind of cooperation between the superpowers in terms of detente and uh, nuclear arms agreements, etc. Um, and we look at the Cold War um, and how it influences countries and politics in Latin America and Africa uh, before focusing on a kind of second element of tension and then the decline of the Soviet Union in the end of the Cold War in the 1980s. Um, both really, really interesting courses um, with, with plenty to get stuck into and big kind of impact on Britain and the wider world. Um, so they both have exams worth 40% that you'll sit at the end of 30, uh, year 13. And the final element of the course is, is really different and it's excellent because it prepares you really well for career or university. It's more independent study and you will get taught a really kind of brief skeleton course on um, the history of civil rights in the USA between 19, uh, 1863 which was when Abraham Lincoln um, did his Emancipation Proclamation and 1968, which was when Martin Luther King was assassinated. Um, you'll get get a sort of overview of the history. You'll also get taught um, some key skills in terms of kind of independent research at A-level. And then you will get a question and you will be asked to independently research that and you'll have uh, a teacher will be kind of liaising and mentoring you through that. Um, and it culminates in a essay, um, a sort of extended essay that's worth 20% uh, 
um, of your mark and you will be asked to find um, primary sources and historians interpretations that help you answer your question okay uh, like i say really nice to have a, a different interesting topic and really good skills to prepare you um the or the wider world so those three are the units that make up the course two assessed and one marked by your teachers okay right so last of all i've, I've sort of referenced this a little bit but there's obviously specific um jobs that are related to history in terms of sort of tourism um and education museums etc but there is tons and tons of scope for um a springboard into different careers the law is is a classic one where the skills of historians are, are widely valued um, a lot of historians go on to study law um, likewise journalism you know is a course that is really um, connected in terms of skills of history i was surprised i'm talking to my year 11 today about this that you know um, i was sought out by accountancy companies uh, when i finished my degree because you know they said the skills of historians have been able to um, deal with lots of information, organise it, communicate it, effectively write a report and reach a, reach a conclusion. You know, that's what that's what we need, you know, and you can do that. So, you know, it's a, a the skills that you get, you know, are really valued in the um, wider sort of academic and uh, professional world. So it's a, a really good, interesting and A level that gets you a very good qualification. Okay, no, right. So, um, only other thing to say, you know, we're we're a quite a popular subject, um, you know, which is obviously a really positive thing, but it, it speaks well of of students' experience um, and the results they get with us. Um, you know, you're going to have two experienced teachers in terms of myself, Mr. Peel, um, who've been t teaching this course for a number of years now, and um, you know, you will also be taught in separate classes. You know, we've got um, you know good numbers in year 12 currently so that you'll have a, a separate class um, and not a mixed class um, if you study history so that's another positive thing so i'm going to um, stop the presentation and just go on to the chat function so if anyone's got any questions um, i will very happily respond likewise um, please email myself or mr peel if you've got a contact with him um, to ask any questions or from a student perspective please chat to us, please just ask us questions. We can go into a bit more detail. We can show you the textbooks. We can kind of show you a little bit more about what we do uh, and we would be very happy to, to spend the time doing that. So thanks for joining the presentation. And as I say, uh, any questions, please ask them on the chat. Thank you very much. Bye bye.